Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode two of Let's Play Operentia, The Stolen Sun. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, we just started this LP and are already having an absolute blast. Um, hope you watched the first episode. If not, then here's a quick recap of what's going on now. Your life was so simple until now, till now, but then you had a dream and the same one again and the same one again. Every night a white stag, every night a sunken castle. The time has come to follow that dream and to brace yourself for total weirdness in the great adventure to come. And here we are. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and check out what's going on here. We've got Jaska. He is a Hmm. He's got a dagger. Extra attack chance 7%, small in size, but it can still make you bleed all the same. And a sling, weak and not very accurate, but at least it provides some sort of ranged attack. And I have a rusty dagger. No one has used this for hundreds of years. And a sling. Um. Guide. Inventory. Toggle attributes. What does that mean? Up. Oh, is that shift? Ah. Very good. So he's got a lot of agility, some strength and vigor. And I'm sort of built similarly. <clears throat> he's got alchemy, and I've got trick shot. Um... He's got herbalism and impest your enemy to deal four to seven initial poison damage and two to five recurring poison damage over three turns. Also has 75% chance to make your enemy sleep for three turns. Attributes. We can redistribute. Um, then we've got an inventory. Nothing much in it. Looks like there's lots of inventory. Firewood, gold. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and check. Um, what we've got going on here active quest find the first tower the first three maidens will await your rescue in the first tower save the captives from the underwater terror nine fair maidens from king Vakar's realm have been trapped captured and imprisoned in the sunken castle so what if a car is reviled by his people these women are innocent and he's offering a handsome reward which he will very likely try to cheat you out of, but that's not why you're here anyway. Lead on, adventure. Your quest awaits. Um, items. Amulet of Zotmund. This is the Zot the one that Joska has. No pesky... I'm going to read this, but I have some coffee here. I'm just waking up and drinking my coffee. No pesky, impassable body of water is going to stand in my way now, I told myself after going through hell for the amulet of Zotmund, at least until that old ranger came along. Really, when is he ever going to need to rip a lake in half? He's going to die soon. Is it possible the old man respects its history as I do? Does he even know where it comes from? The stories vary, but I like to think it actually does possess the soul of Zotmund, a knight no long ago for his legendary swimming ability. It is said that his king tasked him with drilling holes into enemy ships as he held his breath for minutes at a time, which of course resulted in the quiet sinking of an entire fleet. Other than that, it's actually quite ugly as amulets go. I'd be, I'd be more descriptive if I still possessed the damn thing. Companions, Joska. My name is Joska and I am a thief. There, any who read this possibly long after my own death know right away that I believe in the honest approach. Unless I'm actually stealing from you, in which case I'll likely lie to your face. I do feel mighty terrible about it, but once again I remind you, thief. I've lived most of my adult life on the road ever since my otherwise respectable family all but disowned me. It's been a long journey full of interesting friends, enemies, and friends who became enemies. Funny how it never works the other way around. But as I grew older, I do feel the need to steal my last gold piece and settle down somewhere. Which brings us to King Vakar's reward. As I write this, still nursing a massive headache from an old man who had the gall to attack me, 
I fight through each rotting hallway in this god's forsaken place in the hopes that Vicar actually pays what I'm promised once I've rescued all of the nine lovely ladies held captive here. But I'm preparing for a letdown if I don't die first. The three worlds. An upper world, a middle world, and an underworld. It's such basic knowledge and I don't know why I'm even writing it down. I must be really bored. <clears throat> Let's start with what the storybooks tell us is known as the Middle World. That would be this very land I'm standing on, Operencia. We humans live here and we tolerate, sometimes eat, all of the other mortal creatures surrounding us. Some suggest the really annoying ones, the mosquitoes, the gnats, and all the creepy crawlies, aren't actually from around here. They come from below. And that below is simply known as the Underworld, a hellish landscape of general unpleasantness and where all of the worst souls of the dead retreat to live on. Do you suppose a monster born there, <laughs> be it a dragon, a succubus, maybe the devil or dog himself, or dog himself, are actually miserable? If it's all you know as you grow, what is the bar between misery and happiness? I'll ask the succubus if I ever seen one, I guess. Finally, there's the upper world, which most of our Operentians simply refer to as the land of the gods. Go figure, it's a land where the gods live. Sometimes our folklore could use a little more creativity with its naming. And if we're good down here, our souls will end up there once we die. Whether they find their way to the gold forest, the silver forest, the copper forest, or somewhere else entirely, I have no idea. I'd get <clears throat> into who the, all the gods, gods are, but that would suggest I'm sure they even exist to begin with. Do I even believe there's something above us and below us that we, we're stuck in the middle of it all? Common sense inclines me not to. But then again, I've been around enough to suspect that not everything out of the ordinary I see in Operencia actually originated here. Fighting a dragon as a young man will do that to you. All, and all that scares the hell out of me. I'd much rather be in the middle of nothing. <laughs> Interesting. Um... Like in, oh, dialogue, okay. And finally, a guide. Um, we know all that stuff. All right, so let's I'm gonna light a cigarette here. Let's get into it. Okay, nothing we can do here. I'm going to be taking my time. So, being in a rush does not apply here. We are, in fact, underwater. There's a key in this chest that we were told. There, you see? A key and some other goods as well. We should equip those. Got a robe. Open the game menu to equip your parties and set and to set their skills. Sling. Iron key. 29 gold. New guide entry. Alright, press O to read it. Equip characters. So, um, how do we actually equip? Let's see. We've got a robe, a fine linen robe, probably stolen from the wardrobe of a noble. One defense, one percent. Um, I don't want him with the robe. One percent. Uh, I don't know what that is. Let's go ahead and give that to... I have the lower defense, so I should wear that. Takes me to 50. Um, and then we have a... Another sling, which we already have. that 
Why would anyone lock this place up? There's nothing here but water. On the ceiling. And in the hallways. This feels like a game where you could miss a lot. Find the first tower. Key, no entry. Oh. Yeah, this feels like a game where you can miss a lot if you rush through. Nothing. Oh, boy. Soul Deck Warriors, okay. Marking. 4 to 11 physical damage plus weapon damage. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, I think. On you. Missed. Herbalism. Clariana's kiss. Um, mark your enemy. attack. Oh dear. <clears throat> We're getting rocked already. Um. Nice. Hmm, this is good coffee. This range attack. There we go. Some XP. Fist shield protects a minimal surface area but allows for greater mobility. Well, that's a new one. If the legends are true, these were men once. Transformed by the curse that sank this stronghold. Condemned to serve King Breck until death. And I suppose this King Breck wants us dead. Him, the dragon. Does it matter who really? Dragon? Yeah, that dragon. <laughs> Let's find a safe place to rest and we'll talk. Stay quiet for now. We may attract more Zoldek. Or worse. Journal entries. Okay, um... Defense. Okay, so adds 29 to our defense. There we go. Um, journal. The sunken castle, the Lake of Anna. No matter what reward, no man in his right mind would ever enter the forgotten sunken castle of King Breck. But hey, I'm Joska. That's never stopped me before. I remember hearing the news of what happened here some 20 years ago. It's really quite unbelievable. But then again, here I am within its walls writing this. 
Funny how battling a sword-wielding man-sized frog has a tendency to add validity to things. There were two rich rival brothers, Breck and Vicar, both building their own castles and declaring themselves kings. Though they both built impressive armies, their biggest war was one upmanship, upsmanship. Continuing to build onto his castle on the lake was one of Breck's ways of accomplishing this. While Breck was improving his castle, he called upon the Stonemason's Guild to make some additions. Have we them to thank for some of the castle's eccentricities? Perhaps, but I feel there is something more. Part of me wonders if they actually conspired with King Vicar, who one day boasted to Breck that he had managed to curse this place. He said all it would take was the tears of a young maiden to submerge the castle into the lake. Breck called what he perceived to be Vicar's bluff with one of his own, a peace offering. It did not take long for him to summon all the young women in Vicar's kingdom to a celebration that would represent a truce between the two kingdoms. Vicar obliged, but opted to stay home, still encouraging any in his kingdom to attend should they feel so inclined. The celebration dinner was delicious and full of great cheer. But then came time for the special surprise, to the horror of all the guests... Breck chose the twelve most beautiful female guests to be attached to his carriage, as though they were horses, forced to guide his carriage from the castle into Vicar's kingdom as a sign of superiority. Do you think this will make them cry, was what he instructed all who returned to Vicar to tell him. However, the horse maidens never made it past the drawbridge. Unable to move the carriage very far at all, the girls were whipped and abused as Breck's frustration mounted. One of them, Anna, finally cried, prompting the curse promised by Vicar to take effect. As the castle sank, all victims turned to swans and swam safely to shore. Anyone still alive either committed suicide, that explains all the skeletons strewn about this place, or turned into Zoldek warriors. I'm not sure what is what this meant for Breck. I suppose I'll find out soon. Zoldek. Ever since the castle sank 20 years ago, I've heard the silly legend of King Breck's soldiers turning into frog warriors as it happened. I never believe it until now, but there's no denying it. Zoldek warriors are real. Yes, they seem to have lost all sense of humanity. Can they even communicate? But at the same time, it's quite remarkable what capable fighters they remain. I'd wager they're even more deadly than they were as humans. The smell alone is worth 10 stabs from a saber. Ugh. <clears throat> Okay. Don't look at me. I don't have that key. Can't pick up that urn. No key, no entry. Huh. I guess that's it for in here then. No, there's probably lots of secrets if it's a good dungeon crawler. No key, no entry. Seven XP gain. I want to see what's down here. Oh, the 
this is a uh, just this way. Two firewood added. Campfires can be used to regenerate characters' health and energy. Manual saving is only available while resting at the campfires. Up, down. Rest. Uh... One piece of firewood is needed to rest. At campfires, firewood can be gained by picking up logs or smashing certain wooden objects. Uh, let's go ahead and save the game. Do we have to rest to trigger some sort of conversation? No, I'm not going to rest yet. Ah. So we need to. Um. Wait, this is the way we came. Let's just see if we have to trigger conversation. The companions took time to rest, equip themselves, and chat. Yoshka told of his true reason for being there. King Valkar is a tyrant and a boar, but he does offer a nice reward. Nine wives of his finest soldiers have been kidnapped, now slaves to King Breck in this very castle. Many knights, including said nine fine soldiers, have been sent to rescue them. Guess how many have returned? None? None. You can tell Vakar is really desperate if he resorts to the likes of me for such things. I heard a rumor he's down to one young knight. And you know none of this. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm literally following my dreams. Yoshka listened to his new associate's tale with a mix of great interest and charmed disbelief. Yeah, I'm going to... Alt F4 here. I apologize, guys, but I don't want to trigger that just yet because we are playing on hard. And we're going to need every bit of firewood that we can muster. So um, I'm going to save that firewood. Bong, bong. Uh... I did save there. Perfect. How did this castle sink? No. What in the world? Did I just use both my firewood and did it save that? Oh my gosh. At least we know their triggers dialogue there. Okay, click it once. How did this castle sink? Is it actually cursed? So they say. It's a long story. Feel free to shut me up if you just want to move on with things. I won't mind. Happily. Can't say I blame you. Anyway, before King Vakar ruled these lands, he had a rival king. His brother, King Breck. Welcome to his castle. It's lovely. Though both kings built impressive armies, their biggest war was one upmanship. Breck was constantly adding on to his castle. He even had the legendary stonemasons guild contribute a few times. A couple of years into their pissing match, just about two decades ago, Fokkar told Breck he had managed to curse this place. And all it would take were the tears of a young maiden to submerge the castle into the lake. Turning all his warriors to Zoldek as well, I presume. That's some curse. 
Exactly. Breg thought Vaka was bluffing though. I mean really, wouldn't you? So he decided to pull a bluff of his own. A peace proposal. A farce of a celebration took place at this very castle. With many from Vakar's kingdom in attendance as well. Vakar himself chose to stay home, however. A wise decision. That party must not have ended well. Breck ordered everyone there from Vakar's kingdom head home with a message. That he had seized the kingdom's twelve most beautiful young women. To serve him as horses with his chariot. Do you think this will make them cry? Was what he instructed all who returned to Vakar to tell him. But sadly, Vakar had not bluffed. Breck locked the young women's faces to mouthpieces designed for mighty steeds, whipped them, and ordered them forward. The first tier was shed just a few steps ahead. The lake around you is now known as the Lake of Anna and the Crier's name. Depending on whom you ask, the effect was immediate or took days. But you're looking at the ultimate result of it right now. I <laughs> hope the innocent survived. They did. In fact, I heard Anna took the opportunity to leave the kingdom for good. Vakar is no saint when it comes to his own people either. Some even suggest the twelve women escaped by transforming into swans, until they peacefully swam back to shore. Well, you didn't just make that all up on the spot, did you? Oh, please. Alas, not even I am that clever. Okay, so we did use a, f a firewood, unfortunately. But, uh, at least so a deer showed up in your dream, and it led you here? Well, I did have the dream several times. And you just walked on into a sunken castle, not knowing what to expect, because a deer in your dreams told you to come here? Yet evil frogmen surprise you. <laughs> when you put it that way. Alright, let's head down. Oh dang, I need oxygen. Where am I going to get oxygen? Uh, to hat, firewood, gold. At least we found more firewood. Head back up. Hmm, Let's see what we found. Jaska can have the hat. A little more than comfortable headwear. Um, we found more firewood. That's all that was down here. find a key. I didn't see if there was a key in there. Oh boy. Inventory. We have two firewood. It's not showing me the keys. Unfortunately. You have the key you needed, now use it. To the first tower. Okay, let's um head up, I guess. As they encountered their first trial, the companions marveled at the intricate system of levers and gated pitfalls. Surely the work of a madman. It felt right at home in this cursed place. Who builds a castle with gated pitfalls in the ground? An ancient tactic to confine groups of prisoners and creatures to specific areas. You seem pretty familiar. You could say that. take any of those weapons. Why I 
I did that. It's unknown. Oh, I guess I did the right thing. Whoa, stop. secret back there. Oh. Hey, look at that. The one who follows a deer to certain doom actually has a brain in their head. <laughs> eh, got lucky. Are you here to save us? Did I ambush them? Yep. Yeah. I know, day. I know. It's an honor to fight me. Um Don't think it grounded it. Liriana's kiss. Sleeping in poison. Let's go ahead and mark you. At least we did good on the Zoldek Ranger. Nice. You're not naked. Twenty-two gold. Are you here to save us? Herbalism from the quick access interface. Ah, so that's how we you heal. Okay. I'm getting there. Thank you. That key should help you too. The way out is clear. You should be able to exit through the front. We won't forget this. I promise. Six more till riches. Come on. Hmm. Bunch of XP gained. Key. Rescued three at a at a time. Small pouch, thirty six gold. Select herbalism. Operate your characters or find recipes to get new spells and potions that can be used during exploration. There, we have some rags. Um, inventory. <clears throat> A worn pouch filled with ancient coins. Default. 
Hmm. All right, so three down. yet. Uh, where was that other key gate? <clears throat> right here. Basement key. Hmm. Target practice. Poison immune, can't sleep. Speaking of target, let's go ahead and target this skeleton warrior. Poison immune. Okay, this is a little dangerous for us. We can only attack that one. Got an extra attack in. Oh, taunted. Dang. <clears throat> Definitely gonna have to rest after this, most likely. Let's go ahead and leg shot you. Miss. That taunt is coming back to hurt us. Now he taunted. Deadly skellies. Hmm. We're they're missing a lot if you see what they're doing. Our evasion is really good. Got an extra attack and missed. Unfortunately, we're missing a lot too. Let's go ahead and leg shot. There we go. 80% chance. Huh, it didn't work. The, uh... What we tried to do didn't work. Come on. Nice. We're getting rocked here. Um... He's in the back row, so we're gonna have to ranged attack. Let's go for the sneak attack. That was an ambush too. Leather hat, genuine fox hide. 44 gold. Skeletons that fight like men. Maybe even better than men. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my gosh, they run fast. Sprinters. <clears throat> Let's come back here and rest. Or maybe we can herbalism. Wonder if that'll get us through for now if I just save here. I thought dragons were fiction. Do you think we'll actually end up face to face with one? They say that the dragon is actually King Breck's pet. <coughs> There's a little more to it than that. I sense another story coming. Much more personal this time. You see, that dragon is Breck's prisoner because of me. I saved his daughter from it myself. What, you don't believe me? Not for a second. It's true. 
Well, my three brothers helped. Last time I ever saw them. Probably 30 years ago. The false sentimentality doesn't make it any more believable, Yoshka. A huntsman, a tailor, an astronomer, and a thief. Guess which brother impressed his father the least? The lying one? Huh. Not this time. We combined our skills to free the princess from the dragon. I never felt so close to them. We thought we had killed the damn thing. But alas, Breck felt compelled to nurse it back to health and keep it locked beside his throne room. Breck promised us each great lands in his kingdom as a reward. Funny how he never followed through there. He certainly had plenty of time to. Before becoming a frog, I mean. I'll play along. What became of your brothers? It's more a matter of what became of me. My reputation as a thief was harming them. They disowned me. I'd say you've got me now. But you haven't earned that yet. <laughs> well, who says I'd want to, dear dreamer? <laughs> Save. Not gonna use the firewood yet. Let's. I hope you don't think this is the beginning of some kind of legendary friendship. Soon as we get paid, I'm off. Well, you're the one welcoming me to this partnership. Remember? Touche. And it's Yoska, not Joska. Oh, 41 minutes, so I guess I'll save here and say thank you for joining me. Fun stuff. Hope you uh, enjoyed this episode and are enjoying the LP and will follow along with me. I'd love to have you for the LP. So feel free. Lots of rhyming accidentally. <laughs> Alright. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Much love, peace, and joy to you guys. Next time we'll go ahead and fight more skeletons and head to that tower. And uh, see what we can find there. See if we can rescue more maidens, find some more loot. I think we picked up, yeah, the hat. Let's go ahead and put that on, the leather hat. Not sure what the helmet icon is. Let's quickly look at the... um. Attributes, physical resistance, okay. Defense. Uh, physical resist doesn't go up, actually. Even though it's the same exact icon. Strange. Now here it does go up one. Oh, it didn't go up one because, right. The hat was not an upgrade, or the leather hat was not an upgrade from the hat. That's why. So it does increase physical resist one. Very nice. All right, so I'll see you guys next time. Take care. What was that you said about oh. the skeletons being fallen knights? The best I can come up with is that we're fighting off the rescuers. When they died here, the curse turned them into skeleton warriors. How did anyone even get down here without your magic amulet to open the way? Do me a favor, would you? Stop worrying about anything making sense. <laughs> Alright, bye-bye guys.